absolutely free. My pillow made in the USA, 10-year unconditional warranty, and it has a 60-day, no questions asked, money back guarantee. You have nothing to lose. So it's time for you to start getting the quality of sleep that you've been wanting and we need. Just go to mypillow.com or call 800-919-6090 promo code Hannity. Take advantage of Mike's special 2 for 1 offer. mypillow.com promo code Hannity. All right, so Devin Nunes, uh, continuing along these lines, he's the chair of the House Intelligence Committee, is set to investigate a role that is played by Clinton operatives in this illegal Obama surveillance. If things aren't worse, worse, now we're finding out, what, that Clinton operatives were feeding information to Christopher Steele. Now, sources now in... In Nunes's memo, the uh, Washington Times reporting are preparing up to five more memos calling into question the FBI and Department of Justice's handling of the Russian election meddling investigation. And his first memo, of course, said the FBI Justice Department officials misled the FISA courts, the national uh, secret surveillance powers, while seeking that warrant to monitor the communication of former Trump campaign foreign advisor, Carter Page. Now, the second salvo in all of this uh, are telling the Washington Times will rely on an argument that was promoted by the Senate Judiciary Committee chairman, Chuck Grassley and and Lindsey Graham in their unredacted memo. I know this gets this gets hard to follow, but it's it's why I keep going back and laying the foundation every time. And uh, that the two senators are saying Clinton family associates were feeding Christopher Steele, the former MI6 spy that was using Russian government sources to create the dossier that nobody verified. Fusion GPS never verified. The FBI never verified. And they said, well, we just went on past work with Christopher Steele as a means of presenting it. And then they withheld the most important information of all. Hillary Clinton bought and paid for. And they created a false illusion before the judge saying, well, look at this memo by Michael Isikoff. Well, Michael Isikoff got fed information by Christopher Steele. So anyway, so when you look at the Grassley-Graham memo, and now Nunes is following up on this, they're now pointing out that Clinton family associates were feeding Steele accusations against the Trump campaign and apparently also verifying, you know, parts of the dossier that we knew are false and know are false like hookers urinating in a bed in a Ritz in the Moscow. You, I, I honestly, you cannot make this stuff up. You really can't. All right, we got a lot coming up today. Rand Paul, also Joe DeGeneva, Victoria Tunsing, Jonathan Gillum, Dan Bongino, straight ahead. But here's the confusion. Some at home will say, we just want them to cooperate. If they would just hold hands and sing Kumbaya, everything would be fine. Well, guess what? That's what you've got. You saw both of the leadership of both sides opposing me because they are now clasped hand in hand. Everybody's getting what they want. Everybody's getting more spending. The military, the right's getting more military spending. The left is getting more welfare spending. And you're getting stuck with a bill. Not even technically you. It's the next generation being stuck with the bill. Your grandkids are being stuck with the bill. But mark my words, the stock market is jittery. The bond market is jittery. There is an undercurrent of unease amidst this euphoria you've seen in the stock market. A country cannot go on forever spending money this way. And what you're seeing is recklessness trying to be passed off as bipartisanship. So we've gotten together. They're all holding hands. And there's only one bad guy standing in the way. One guy's going to keep us here till 3 in the morning. Well, you know what? I think the country's worth a debate till 3 in the morning, frankly. I think it is worth a debate on whether or not we should borrow a million dollars a minute. When the Democrats are in power, Republicans appear to be the conservative party. But when Republicans are in power, it seems there is no conservative party. You see, opposition seems to bring people together and they know what they're not for, but then they get in power and they decide, hmm, we're just going to spend that money too. We're going to send that money to our friends this time. The hypocrisy hangs in the air and chokes anyone with a sense of decency or intellectual honesty. The right cries out, our military is hollowed out, even though military spending has more than doubled. 
since 2001. The left is no better. Democrats don't oppose the military money as long as they can get some for themselves, as long as they can get some for their pet causes. The dirty little secret is that, by and large, both parties don't care about the debt. The spending bill 700 pages, and there will be no amendments. The debate, although it's somewhat inside baseball that we're having here, is over me having a 15-minute debate. And they say, woe is me. If you get one, everybody will want an amendment. Well, guess that that would be called debate. That would be called an open process. That would be called concern for your country, enough to take a few minutes. And they're like, but it's Thursday, and we like to be on vacation on Fridays. And so they they clamor, but we've been sitting around all day. It's not like we've had 100 amendments today, and we're all worn out. We can't do one more. We're going to have zero amendments. Zero. Goose egg. No amendments. So it's a binary choice. They love that word. It's a binary choice. Take it or leave it. You know what? I'm going to leave it. I didn't come up here for this. Amazing words last night by Paul, uh, Rand Paul of Kentucky. You know, the saddest thing is what he said there. And it's it. Listen, I, it's just we got to find admit truth. When uh, Republicans are out of power, they sound so conservative. They're so worried about the debt and the deficit. And then they get into power. And this bill blows a hole in the deficit a mile wide. I don't see any excuse for it. Now, I understand that you need 60 votes. I understand for whatever reason, Mitch McConnell, it's inexplicable to me, is mysteriously reluctant and resistant at getting rid of this arcane, ridiculous filibuster rule, especially considering how the Democrats weaponize it against Republicans every time. You know, just they ought to just now go to a simple majority and then things can actually get done that are better for the country. And this is where we got into trouble trying to thread the needle with, well, the House bill repealing and replacing Obamacare has to be used through the reconciliation process because reconciliation was the means by which it was passed by Obama and big legislation was never designed to be done by this. You know, they're always coming up with like the next trick. They're always coming up with the, the, the next idea. Always coming up with a, you know, but at the end of the day, you know, the last president accumulated more debt than every other president combined. Now, the military, the sequestration did not have a good impact on the military. And the first job of government is to protect its citizenry. Now, off the top of my head, I I can think of a couple of things that we can do to pare down in terms of military spending. We, We are almost, you know. Our military presence is almost everywhere around the world. It has to, We have to pull back. We have to allow countries the right to protect themselves, and they've got to be less dependent on us. It doesn't take away our role as the leader of the free world and, you know, protecting our friends and our allies and standing up against tyranny and injustice when, when we can. We can't fight every war at every time. But the military is in need of constant upgrading— especially as you see in a mini arms race beginning with the Iranians seeking nuclear weapons and now this lunatic in North Korea, you know, threatening to hit the continental United States. We need defensive weapons. We need offensive weapons. The world's a very dangerous place. Then you've got radical Islamic terror. But to get a deal where, okay, finally to get the right number for the military, the $80 billion this year, the $85 billion next year, which I do think is necessary, you know, then you've got to spend another $300 billion. And then you blow, you know, all budget caps, all the sequestration out of the water. And meanwhile, it's that, that money is going to your grandkids and, and your children are going to have to spend their entire lives paying this back. Now, we're definitely going to see more revenues to the federal government. I think the, the, the energy independence part of the equation of the president's tax plan alone is going to create a a financial boom for D.C. And I think getting people off of food stamps and and back in the labor force and high paying career jobs and energy and lowering the corporate tax cut is going to incentivize the building of factories and manufacturing centers, all things we need. The forgotten men and women of this country. I certainly think the middle class tax cuts were necessary People have been overburdened by government, overtaxed by government. 
you know, for years they haven't gotten any relief. Crumbs as Nancy, you know, thousand dollar crumbs from as Nancy Pelosi calls them. But all this other spending, when, when do we cut? I've always been an advocate of the penny plan. Eliminate baseline budgeting. And except in an area like defense, you cut one penny out of every dollar government spends every year for six years and you balance your budget. This budget is not going to balance. But when Obama's president, they sounded a lot more hawkish on on reducing the debt and reducing the deficits. Anyway, 800-941-SEAN is on number. All right, so I told you, Devin Nunes also, this is a big step here. Uh, He is now demanding that the FISA court turn over transcripts from hearings that were held to evaluate the FBI and Justice Department's application for the surveillance warrant. If my memory serves me right, I do believe in the Grassley-Graham memo that they actually got a hold of the FISA warrant applications. I wonder at what point we're going to be able to see how deceptive the people wanting this warrant on an opposition party candidate were if the bulk of the argument or the bulk of the evidence they used before the FISA judge was actually the Clinton bought and paid for Russian dossier. Uh, Something also overlooked for the second time now in two days, a senior FBI official with connections to the Clinton email and Russiagate probes have announced their resignation. Uh, Yesterday, the Justice Department counterintelligence chief, David Loffman, he announced his departure And in addition to working on the investigation into Clinton's handling of classified information, he also worked on the Russiagate probe. Uh, Fox News is reporting today that Michael Corton, the longtime head of public affairs at the FBI, confidant of former director James Comey, he's now announced his retirement. And since 2009, he served as the assistant director for public affairs, which is a very influential job, which controlled all media access. He also served under former director Robert Mueller is now leading the special counsel. But anyway, the FBI confirmed to uh, Fox News that, in fact, he's retiring. Well, that brings the number of FBI Justice Department officials who've either been fired, resigned, demoted, or dismissed after being involved in the Hillary email. Russiagate investigations now to eight. You got McCabe. Let's see. You got Bruce Orr, demoted. Why he still has a job, I don't know. Peter Strzok, why he has a job, I don't know. Lisa Page, I have no idea. Chief of Staff Rabicki and the General Counsel Baker. Again, you notice there's no rank and file people here because rank and file FBI guys should be proud of the work they do protecting us every day and, and getting involved in counterintelligence um, work that they do and, and digging deep into radical Islamic groups that want to bring harm to our country. They're not the problem. This was, this was an upper echelon deep state problem the people that actually had the power, and every FBI guy I know is embarrassed by this, but it's not their fault. They didn't do anything wrong. Matter of fact, we owe them a debt of gratitude. Just like rank-and-file intelligence, God, thank God we have these powerful tools of intelligence. Just don't turn them on American citizens based on a political candidate's phony, paid-for Russian lies. That's when the problem kicks in. We also have last May... I want to get into this, and we have Joe DeGenev. I'll ask him about this. The FISA court rebuked the Obama administration for their widespread illegal surveillance and serious abuse of the Constitution. Now, given what we've since learned, where's the where's the special counsel? In the in the week since the Nunes, it's been a week since the Nunes House Intel memo was released, followed by the Grassley Graham unredacted released memo and uh, the criminal referral on Christopher Steele. Democrats and the fake news, you know, basically their water carriers keep insisting the Obama administration, they, oh, they did nothing to abuse America's surveillance laws. And they say all the proper procedures were followed. And they say nobody's rights were violated. And anybody who spied uh, was spied on, they deserve to be spied on. Well, apparently everybody's forgotten that only nine months ago, The Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court emphatically blasted the Obama administration for breaking not only America's surveillance laws, but blatantly violating the Constitution and covering it up for years. Now, remember what I've been saying. This is only the tip of the spear, the tip of the iceberg here. 
Now, I forgot all about this story until somebody reminded me of it. Sarah Carter, John Solomon, they broke it in May of, of last year, 2017. And 